contrary to some rumours that have been circulating, Christmas is in fact not cancelled. And it's true to say that Christmas cannot be cancelled. Isn't that exciting? I know our, um, our plans could be cancelled, reshaped and look really different to what we might have been hoping, especially last year, but probably even from a couple of weeks ago. And you might be at home now instead of uh, here in the building, but this time together now is for us to focus on the essence of Christmas and why it is we do it at all. Okay, so let's get rid of the idea that it's all cancelled. Let's put our disappointments to the side and just think about why we're here. Um, we do have to do a few things just to keep us all safe. I can see a lot of people wearing masks. You don't have to wear a mask, but if you want to, we've got some available. You should have signed in with the QR code. Um, if you haven't done that or you haven't got a smartphone, which you can do that, but I'm just going to take your name. So please make sure we've got that on record. Um, remember social distancing. I mean, the crosses on the floor will sort of speak for themselves. That's supposed to be our reminder, but um, yeah, 1.5 metres, they say. And it's sad that we can't sing today. I know there are people who really hate Christmas music. I'm one of the people who really love Christmas music. Um, so I don't know, you might be not disappointed, but you might be disappointed. Um, but uh, their health order is in place, so we're not going to do it. However, we're going to listen to some carols today um, on the video. Very welcome to any kids who are with us today. We love you and we want you to have a happy time. We've got colouring up the back, we've got toys. Um, parents, feel free to do what you need to do with your kids. Um, and there's some, some opportunities for Christmas shopping. I know the main things are shut today. Really important shopping can happen in the back. We've got a compassion table. And if you want to think about generosity, um, yeah. how you can support yeah. people yeah. by giving them some. Um, some gifts, please go ahead and do that. I think Belinda's going to man that table. Yeah, Belinda's right at the back. Um, and if you're new here and you, you don't normally come to church, we will let you know that we're not just a, a Christmas Day thing. We actually meet really regularly on Sunday, actually every Sunday. We meet here at 5 o'clock and then we have another side up at Waverley. We meet there twice on Sundays as well. Okay, enough with the announcements. Um, there's a verse from one carol that reminds us of how deep and meaningful the Christmas message is. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Please pray with me. Our Father, we come to you now as your people, seeking to be renewed in our hope, to be relieved of our fears, to be reminded of your love, to be exposed by your light. We are ready to hear again the news of comfort and joy given to us through the gift of Jesus. Speak to us, please. Amen. Rachel's going to come and read from Isaiah for us now. Um, the first reading is from Isaiah 9. Nevertheless, the time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. The land of Zebulun and Nathalie will be humbled, but there will be a time in the future where Galilee of the Gentiles, which lies along the road that runs between the Jordan and the sea, will be filled with glory. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. For a child is born to us. A son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. Thank you. 
Hi everyone, I'm Avery. I am going to be reading the first lines of The Good News of John. He is talking about something called the Word, by which he means the meaning of life. This is John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we pray that as we listen to God's word through Blake, you will open up our hearts and minds and let us reflect upon the true meaning of Christmas and the blessings that you have given us. In Jesus' name as we pray. Amen. morning and Merry Christmas. It's, it's good to be together even on a bit of a strange Christmas. Uh, good morning also to our Zoom friends. There's five or six people on Zoom, so hello to you. I'm glad you can kind of be with us. Can we say that? I think they're with us. They're with us, aren't they? It's good that you're with us. You say it like that. Well, on the news just this Sunday gone, five days before Christmas, 
Richard Wilkins, or Dicko as you may know him, read us the news about the outbreak on the northern beaches. And he said, this is probably going to mean borders will close. He was right. And then he looked down the camera and he said, well, I guess only 370 days until Christmas now. It was a masterful line, isn't it? Only 370 days till Christmas. He's captured what a lot of us feel. Is he right? Is Christmas cancelled? Kathy already said it's not, and <laughs> Kathy's almost always right. So, <laughs> I mean it. So um, just take note of that. Um, I like that about her a lot. Uh, no, it's not. Although I think a lot of us will have a pretty average year, won't we? Sorry, what I mean is we've probably had an average year, average Christmas. I think we're going to have probably an average Christmas compared to normal for, mo for the most part. I myself and my family for the first time won't, in my whole life, won't gather at my grand's house in Cobra, starting with cheesels on the fingers and pineapple soft drink before the presents come out. It's not going to happen. We just decided not to go ahead with that. That, that. that feels a bit average to me. I have a friend here in Bondi who sees his family from Brisbane a few times a year normally, and he hasn't got to see them this year, and he won't get to see them at Christmas Eve, even though he had tickets. That's, that's pretty average, isn't it? So should we call it with Dicko? Christmas is a non-event. Well, surely that's not enough to cancel Christmas. Um, however, some people won't just have an average Christmas, and perhaps you won't just have an average Christmas. Some of us will have a dismal, a properly dismal Christmas. London is locked down properly. Many in Sydney are in COVID isolation, wait, waiting tests or just having to do the 14 days. Many, many thousands in nursing homes just around Sydney, even just at least, will sit alone today, perhaps like yesterday. For many, this Christmas will be dismal, not just average. So what about that? Is that enough to say that Christmas is a misfire and 370 days or you know, now 365? Well, I want to say no. And it's not because I think that things aren't bad enough to cancel Christmas. I want to say no, Christmas isn't cancelled because Christmas has always been in the context of darkness and gloom, always. I want to say that the difference this year at Christmas is not a qualitative one, as though suddenly we're, you know, darkness and gloom and things are shut. But in quantity, it's just that a few more of us notice the darkness and gloom that is at Christmas. Last year, we were in this room together, more of us actually. Last year, we were in this room together uh, and it was a non-COVID year, things felt different, but I can tell you that my friend in Bondi, his wife had died just a few days earlier, leaving him and his three-year-old son alone. Christmas was already cracking for him before COVID. I read stats this week that um, in Britain, British stats, uh, 250,000 elderly people are alone on Christmas in Britain. 80,000 people in Britain are homeless on Christmas. That's non-COVID. I'm saying every Christmas has its share of human gloom. The difference is that we together are starting to notice, if we hadn't already, and you might have already noticed human gloom, but the difference is that it's, it's very hard to pretend that you're in control anymore. I'm saying that COVID has not only taken things from us, but perhaps it's given us a few things. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't have known what that was on my arm last year if I if I'd worn it. But I'm saying it's given us more than masks. It, I think it's given us clarity about human existence, about the reality of the brokenness of our world. You could have just missed it before this year, but now we're all very aware. And I'm not trying to say that, oh, in Sydney, it's so difficult. There are parts of the world where it's a lot worse. But I think we can notice it this year. We can feel the difference, can't we, at the very least, if not um, own, own it as our own. Okay, but, and so what I'm saying is Christmas is not cancelled because things aren't bad enough. I'm saying Christmas is not cancelled because Christmas has always been and had a context of darkness and gloom and pain and isolation and even death for some people. Um, those things don't stop for Christmas normally. And I want to show you, actually, not only is it kind of just a part of the context of Christmas, but Christmas is birthed out of the darkness of human experience. It kind of comes with Christmas. Uh, let me show you two things from the Bible. Uh, the first, 
or both are from our Christmas reading in John chapter 1, verse 5. And the first half says this. The light has shone into the darkness. That's the first half. The first reason that Christmas is not cancelled is because God is not surprised by the darkness. God is very aware. Christmas, as a reality, is very aware of the darkness. You think about what the Christmas story says. It says that God the Son, the light, came into our dark world. God is not unaware of the darkness of human existence. God came into the dark world. If you think about the first Christmas, no room at the inn for you. Jesus' family experiences, Jesus experiences that kinds of those kinds of human frustrations that we, we experience. No room at the inn. But my wife's really pregnant, no room. The border is up. The, the barrier, at least, is, is up there, isn't it? You think about one thing worse than being told you're not allowed to go to Queensland, a sensitive topic I know because there's some in the room being told this week. Um, one thing worse would be arriving in Queensland, travelling all that way with a pregnant wife and then being told there's nowhere for you to stay. The story that we believe, the God that we follow, is one that is not unacquainted with the darkness and just the, the, the kind of frustrations of human experience. Think more about the first Christmas. The local ruler, Herod, because of human politics, says all the baby boys under two need to be killed in Bethlehem. Off you go, go do it. Our story, our God is not unacquainted with darkness. And you think about Jesus who grows up full of grace and truth. And with all his wisdom and with all his kindness, nonetheless ends up the victim of a rotten justice system, just rotten, and ends up dying a common death on a cross, more than common, a, a pretty uncommon thief's death on a cross. I'm saying, and I want you to hear that God is not unaware of our darkness and gloom. And that's something. And it says that Christmas shouldn't be separated and kept separate from days like today. Uh, but there's more to say, a second reason, because there's a second half of the verse. Not only did the light shine in the darkness, and that's something, but it says the darkness has not overcome the light. Not only is Jesus like us and knows all the different kinds of gloom of human experience, but he has power and light for those moments. The, dark, um, the light has shone in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. I want you to think about this candle here, our uh, advent candle, we finally got to light the last one. And I want you to imagine that we put out the candles around it and then we turn off the spots and the projector and then we turn off the lights here. And I mean, you saw it before when the video was on, it was beautiful, wasn't it? A little bit, little bit dark, darkness around. But then we block out the windows. It's pretty dark in here. You'll see the candle won't you? And then we blot out the sun. The candle will still shine, even though there will be tons and tons of darkness around. You could even take out all the other stars even further away until there was no light except this one. And the darkness won't overcome it because light does win. It's just in the nature of how things work. They're not equal things. And God says to you at Christmas, the first one and each one and each day, the darkness won't overcome. I want you to ask the next question, but it feels like it. It feels like it will. I've had people say to me this, this year, oh, it was just such a terrible three weeks, and I can't believe that on top of that three weeks, this happened. I just, how could that, how could God let that happen is what they said. It feels like more darkness upon more darkness upon more darkness. But God speaks and says, the light has shone in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was darkness in Jesus' tomb. That's about the darkest type of darkness, isn't it? Death. And there was darkness in Jesus' tomb. And it looked like darkness upon darkness. And there was no more hope. But this Jesus is in our darkness with us. 
but he also has a kind of power and a kind of life that you and I don't have. And so he was resurrected. And what looked like only darkness, there was light there. So I want to invite you in whatever darkness, be it just an average Christmas, all the way through to a nightmare, I invite you to trust God's word here that says the, the light shines and it won't be overcome. That, that's the invitation this morning. The same light that took nothing before the universe was created, there was just nothing. It was darkness. And then light shone. You couldn't imagine what was going to happen next. And then light shone. And it was different. The same kind of darkness of a womb that is empty. And there's no, no chance that that womb could be filled. No chance. And yet light shone in dark places and new things and life came to be. And the same light that shone in the darkness of a tomb, unbelievable. That light is for you. Christmas is the news that God has given himself to you. God has given himself to you in Christ. The light of life. And so I want to invite you this morning to come into the light. For the first time, for the millionth time, see the light. Enjoy the light. Let it shine on you. Believe what it means that it won't be overcome. And believe that it has goodness and places for you to go in the light. Things that you couldn't have done in the dark. My family has had just a really, just yucky year. Just lots of yucky stuff, darkness upon darkness. And we're all pretty sad and tired, a bit heartbroken. It just feels like kind of darkness. And yet I can say that we also have Jesus who is the light. We are definitely in the dark and we feel the peace that comes from Jesus. We're, we're just pretty sure, not pretty sure, I'm being colloquial. We are sure that God loves us because of Jesus. That's light in the dark. Peace. We also have meaning and purpose. We know that what is happening is not meaningless, but God will hold it. And that's light in darkness. And we have hope for the future. We know that it won't be the end. Just like even though the tomb looked like it was the end, it looked really the end. We know that it's not the end. There's a hope for us. It's solid. Just as Jesus is solid. There's a hope for us. And that's light in the dark. And if you don't have that, you should get some light from Jesus. How do you do that? I'm generally not, I do my best never to say, come to church next Sunday. It's just, it's just too cliche, isn't it? I'm going to say, you should come to church next Sunday because Jesus will give you just a little, at least a little of his light if you come to church. Go to, I'll do the disclaimer. If you go to another church, I'm happy. About, I'll be genuinely happy about that if they teach you the Bible. But I'd love you to come here too. Go to church and let the light of Jesus shine on you each week and fill your life with light. Another way, um, go to church uh, and do it more than Christmas. Christmas is not enough. I reckon you'll walk out of here a bit encouraged. I think you will because Jesus' light shines when his word's spoken. Uh, but once a year is not enough. And so I'm saying go more often. Go every week and, and be filled ready for the darkness that awaits at work or wherever it is for you. Uh, second way to engage with Jesus is in an alpha course. It's just a really relaxed lounge room thing, wine, cheese, and a video that helps you discuss and ask questions and answer some questions that uh, we often have about um, Jesus and life and purpose. And we'll be starting one of those in February and probably another one in April. And so I want you to think about doing that if, if you're thinking, actually, I want some of that light and I don't have it. Okay, I'm gonna lead us to pray. And then there's a few other things that can answer for us. Gracious God, we thank you for your word here in the Bible that uh, speaks a message of hope that Jesus is the light of the world, that he has come close and he knows um, this kind of darkness uh, that we are getting at least a little taste of. And um, more than that, it won't overcome. Please give us trust. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I
I know it's not my fault. It's not my fault. Someone's fault. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. But then you still feel like the one who's out of the class. Today we say thank you for pouring out your love and grace anyway. Thank you for including us in your plan to save the world. Thank you that you did that by Emmanuel and God with us. Your light reveals us for what we are, broken people who desperately need you. Turn our hearts and minds and affections towards you, the light of the world. Forgive us for preferring darkness to light and enable us to live in your light and grace today and every day. This year has seen plenty of darkness and there's been so much suffering on the planet. Lord, we lift up to you those across the globe who are sick with COVID especially. Please, in your mercy, help them recover and bring this pandemic to an end. And for those for whom poverty, loneliness, sadness and anxiety has grown during this season, we ask you to speak into their lives with hope. Give them a glimpse of the light you bring and enable them to walk in faith towards you despite their pain. Please help organisations such as Compassion and other organisations around the world to be bearers of hope through giving and help us participate in this bringing of life and hope by our own generosity. Make us generous with our money, with our time and with our words. Jesus, you're coming to bring peace and yet in so many ways we can't see this yet. We pray that you will come quickly and as we wait for you, please fill us with hope and joy in believing in the name of Jesus. My favourite carol, we managed to squeeze into this, but I'm very happy about that. It's our holy night, and we're going to uh, watch a version of that um, to, just now. 
and that line, the weary world rejoices, I think a lot of churches have been using this as a bit of a theme um, for their church this year. And I, I think it's a really um, a great line, a thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. Let's watch our whole line.
brings Christmas church to an end. And I hope that whatever you've got planned for the rest of the day reminds you of the grace that you've been shown from Jesus. The gifts you open, the food you consume, the food coma you are likely to experience by about maybe 3 p.m. Uh, the people around you, take a moment to look at them as gifts of grace from Jesus. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make this face to shine upon you and give you his peace. Thanks for coming.